Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now my Ancient America series, we are learning the term Ancient America goes back quite a long time. And today we're going to go down to a site that is one of the earliest known in the ancient United States. And this is called the Cactus Hill Archaeological Site located in Virginia. And what was found here really makes uh, historians and archaeologists reconsider what they thought was a story. But this is the site today. And you notice a roadway going by here. And I think that was the key to finding this site. But the archaeology work has been finished here. But what they found here was very remarkable. When the Virginia Department of Transportation was putting in a, I think they called it the Route 3 corridor and some new roadways about 30 years ago. What they do is they have archaeological teams just kind of go out and do some general survey work of the area that they're going to be putting in the roadway. I guess that is how I understand it. And when they were just doing some general studies, they hit pay dirt in this area. And what they found is truly remarkable. And 99% of all the artifacts of really ancient Virginia come from this one site. And what they do is when they're going to build a roadway, they have archaeologists go out and then they, they dig holes about 50 feet apart through areas where the roadway is going to be going. And usually these contain nothing of any value whatsoever. But when they did the testing with those holes in this area, a guy dug down, put the shovel full of dirt into a sifter, which is just a mesh sifter, about a quarter inch holes in it. And what he found, I'm going to have him tell you about it right now. But Joe Parfit's shovel was about to hit pay dirt. We were digging along. We entered a cedar grove and I put in a shovel test. And when I put the first shovel full of dirt into the screen and I shook the dirt, to sift it out, it was, it appeared to be all artifacts. I mean, uh, it, it made a sound like a bunch of bottle glass rubbed across metal. I actually, I pretty much hooted and hollered a little bit. A shovel test might be considered to have a high frequency of artifacts if they have 15. And we had anywhere between 200 and 500 in some of the tests. There was more Jasper in there than there was, than there was soil. Now that comes from a clip from about a 28 minute video and I will leave that full video link below and I thought it was excellent and I'm going to just use just maybe a minute or two coming up also from that video but it's from the Virginia Department of Transportations and I'll leave the full links below but this this here is study.com now that's a great sounding website study.com and this is run by this lesson is run by Christopher Moscato of the University of Northern Colorado and I'm not sure how old this article came from But let's just do a little reading. It says the discovery of Cactus Hill has a dramatic impact on our understanding of how the Americans were first settled many millennia ago in this lesson We will take a closer look at Cactus Hill and see what it means for archaeology and it talks about the land bridge that people Theorize that people came over 14,000 years ago. It says, archaeologically speaking, this has prompted some interesting questions like, who got there and when did this happen? It was a slow foot race across the globe. And as far as archaeologists are concerned, the first people into the Americas came across the Bering Land Bridge that connected Alaska and Russia when sea levels were low due to glaciation roughly 14,000 years ago. The first culture to develop in North America came from these settlers and are called the Clovis people, traditionally assumed to have existed around 12,000 years ago. That's what we long believed. However, some new archaeological sites are causing people to question that assumption. Chief among them is the Cactus Hill site, which may force archaeologists to review their evidence on the race to North America and reconsider who crossed the finish line first. But let's also take this into consideration. Maybe people were always here. Did people, were there just no people on this massive continent? And people had to migrate here? Is that the story?
It says, Cactus Hill is located on the Nodaway River in Virginia. Due to the changing course of the river over time, the region is covered in hills of sand that were once riverbanks. It was in one of these hills that artifact collectors in the early 1980s stumbled on some unusual artifacts which were reported to a retired state archaeologist. Cactus Hill was tested by archaeologists in 1988 and then formally excavated from 1993 to 2002. So what did they find? Well, at first there was a pretty clear Clovis site. The Clovis people had a very distinct type of stone tool, so it was easy to recognize. There was no sign of the Clovis site having been disturbed, and yet as archaeologists kept digging below the Clovis site, they found more artifacts. There was some buried charcoal consistent with campfires where people would have lived, as well as a whole set of various stone tools. The strange thing was that these tools did not match the very consistent style of the, Clo of the Clovis people. But how could something be older than the oldest culture in the Americas? That's the real significance of the Cactus Hill site. Researchers believe it could provide the strongest argument ever for a pre-Clovis culture, meaning that people inhabited North America much earlier than previously thought. It says, so let's review the evidence. Cactus Hill stone tools don't look like Clovis tools. This site was found below an undisturbed Clovis site. Also, the charcoal found at Cactus Hill is an organic material, so it could be carbon dated and ended up being dated at roughly 18,000 years old. And if you recall, archaeologists have until now thought that the first people came here around 14,000 years ago. But that dating of 18,000 years old, pretty remarkable. And they also dated some charcoal that wasn't found as far down. And that came back to like 11 or 12,000 years ago. So that gave them a real good idea as far as what the layers were dated at. Now, the story, the 14,000 years ago migration story has to be called into huge question. And the further attached story that these people came across the land bridge 14,000 years ago and slaughtered every woolly mammoth and every other single species of megafauna, including saber-toothed tigers, and were they hunting saber-toothed That story is a bunch of pure crap. Now here is a look at the archaeological dig at Cactus Hill. Some of the artifacts that were found and the jasper that was found here was really special because the nearest was that they knew about was like 25 miles away. So this had to be brought here, they theorized. But the finding of the charcoal was key because that provided a few different answers. One, the radiocarbon dating age. I'm trying to remember, I think it was about 12,000 years old. And that came from burnt spruce. So they knew that this came from a different climate as it is now because the spruce only grows up at the highest elevations in Virginia, I believe, today. So it was a much colder time period towards the end of the last ice age. And also, since the site was undisturbed, it gave a strata layer of 12,000 years ago. So they knew what was below was older, and the further down they dug, it just got older and older. Now here is an excellent website, Lithic Casting Lab, and here are some artifacts found. They talk about the 18,000 year old date of this site. And here is another artifact found. That says an epoxy cast of a fluted point from the Cactus Hill site. And that says an epoxy cast of a quartz crystal point from the Cactus Hill site. But the finding of the Jasper was very interesting because uh, I think the Blue Ridge Mountains, uh, miles away, was the nearest source of Jasper that they knew of. And they were finding it here in chunks like half of a bowling ball, real big chunks. So they couldn't figure out what the deal was. But let's just listen to another clip from that video. And they found out where that Jasper was coming from. The uh, volume of rock we were finding at this particular spot kind of pointed to the fact that it was probably a fairly local source. But doing map work and doing reviews of archaeological records and things like that, we didn't really have anything that would uh, indicate that there should be a lot of jasper in this area. 
As we were continuing our work here, we found just absolutely amazing amounts of jasper, and, and in sizes, blocks the size of uh, five, 10 pound bags of flour. And it didn't make a lot of sense to us that people would actually be transporting pieces of rock that size any great distance at this particular spot. Our idea was that perhaps um, if we were to work in the little streams around here, we might actually find some jasper that would actually lead us to a source material in, in the uplands. I spent time walking up and down the creeks and going down to the rivers looking for nodules of jasper and, and didn't find anything. And the creek beds are all the native greenstone, siltstone, mudstones. The Brook Run crew was not only running out of theories, they were running out of time. With no new information being generated on the use of the site, the allotted time for the excavations was drawing to a close. The day before the dump trucks were to begin filling the holes, the crew identified a crack in the bedrock at the base of one of the excavation units. A backhoe was called in to dig just a few feet deeper. With less than 24 hours remaining to solve the puzzle, the backhoe's metal scoop uncovered a rock formation that was to be the missing piece. It was at that point that we realized then that we had a, a fault between two uh, members of bedrock, local bedrock, and that seam was filled with uh, all the debris from mining jasper out of the seam. So all this time we'd been digging and doing backhoe work and everything else trying to find it, it was literally, literally right below our feet as we did the work. Well, it was pretty exciting to find, to find jasper in a primary source in an odd spot like this. And then much of the uh, different pieces of the site began to fall together and make a little more sense. So we found they weren't really making the tools here. What they were doing was like an industrial operation. They were coming here, mining the jasper, making it into a, a, a transportable item they could then take who knows how far away and make their tools at the campsite or where they were living. Now, it seems a lot of people were coming here a long time ago, and I'm talking about the end of the Ice Age, that long ago. There was a lot of people coming here, taking chunks of Jasper and taking it back to wherever they lived. The artifacts went into the hundreds of thousands at this site. So this was used by a lot of people over a long period of time. And the dating of 18,000 years, well, this isn't the only site. I've talked about the Galt site. Now, I also talked about the Galt site, went back 18,000 years. And that video is my first one in my Ancient America series to go over 100,000 views, so I appreciate all the interest in that one. And this isn't the last site I'm going to talk about that really pushes back the history of the ancient United States back, really, thousands of years. But as far as I can gather, the archaeological work has stopped here. And what they did is they buried the site. So archaeologists, decades or even centuries down the line, can study the site in the future. And did they do what they did at Gobekli Tepe 10,000 years ago? Did they just do that here by burying the site? And I should also mention that once the site was discovered, they diverted the roadway around this so archaeological work could be done here. But I think I will end it there. That is the history of the Cactus Hill site in Virginia. I think they said between Fredericksburg and Culpeper, about 40 miles south of Richmond. But I think the greatest lesson we are learning in this Ancient America series is we know very little. We can barely wrap our head around the mound builder civilization. This comes from before the Clovis culture. People working on the site a while ago seem to be frustrated that the standard model still says Clovis was this original culture in the ancient United States. Well, I think we are proving that wrong in this Ancient America series. And how many other sites like this are right under our feet? I'll leave you with that. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.